In this video, I'm going to show you how to insert new data into Firestore. If you haven't gotten the source code yet, there's a link in the description of this video. Before we start writing new code, let's quickly talk about the code that I've provided. Currently the app has two activities, a dialog fragment, and an object class named note. Login activity, main activity, new note dialog, and note. As you might have guessed, the login screen is login activity. Keep in mind there's no way to register new users from the app. You'll need to manually add them from the authentication section of your Firebase console. I'll do a demonstration in case that's unclear. Navigate to the authentication section. Go to the sign in method tab. Enable email and password sign in. Go to the users tab. Click the add user button. I'll add some random email. It doesn't have to be real. You're just going to use it to log in with the app. Now let's log in. I'll type the email and type the password. Now we're ready to write the code required to insert new data. Open main activity. Main activity is what you see now that you're logged in. Everything in here is pretty straightforward. Scroll down to the onClick method. There's an onClick listener attached to the floating action button down here. When the user clicks it, new note dialog is inflated. New note dialog is where we capture the data we want to insert. Open it up. This is a pretty basic layout. There's an edit text for a title, an edit text for some content, a create button, and a cancel button. There's onClick listeners attached to the create button and the cancel button. Inside the onClick method, there's a switch statement checking for each case. The case for the create button is what will write the logic for inserting new data. But before we insert the data, we need to define exactly what we're going to insert. Open the note class. This is what we're going to be inserting into Firestore, note objects. If you're familiar with the Firebase database, which I'm assuming most of you are, you'll likely find this very similar. Firestore just has a few extra features. The first feature unique to Firestore is the ignore extra properties annotation. This annotation can prevent crashes when incorrectly retrieving objects from Firestore. It's going to ignore extra fields retrieved by a query and then it will only add the fields from the object class. So in general, there's no downside I can think of when adding this annotation. There's basically no harm in just using it. Next is the server timestamp annotation. I absolutely love this new feature. When you use it on a date field like I've done here, Firestore will automatically insert a server timestamp if you pass null to the field. So in other words, when I insert a new note object, I'm going to pass null to the timestamp field that will trigger the insertion of a server timestamp. I'll show you what I mean. If you take a look at some of these note documents, you can see a timestamp here. That was not inserted by me. That gets automatically generated by Firestore when the data is inserted. Other than those two features, this is just a plain old Java object class. Go back to new note dialog. We could insert the new data right here in new note dialog, but I want to keep all the Firestore tasks in main activity. So we're going to use an interface. Right click on the main package directory, go to new, Java class, make sure to change this to an interface. Call it iMainActivity. Now the first method is going to be create new note. It's going to take a string called title and a string called content. Now go back to main activity. At the top of the class, implement the iMainActivity interface. Click the red light bulb and implement our new method. I'm going to cut it and paste it just below on create. Now go back to new note dialog. At the top of the file, under the vars heading, declare the iMainActivity interface. Scroll down to the bottom and let's instantiate the interface. Since it's an interface, we need to instantiate it in the onAttach method. Press Ctrl O on Windows or Command O on Mac, find the onAttach method and insert it. Now inside onAttach, write miMainActivity equals iMainActivity get activity. Now that the interface is instantiated, we can call the create new note method in the switch statement. So I main activity dot create new note and then pass the title and pass the content. Now go to main activity and let's finish up writing the insert logic. Every Firestore task starts the same way with the Firebase Firestore instance object. Now we need to create a reference for where we're going to be inserting the data. You have two options here. If you're inserting a new document, which is what we're doing, you need a document reference object. So I'm going to call it new note ref 
and we want to reference the notes collection because that's where we're going to be putting the document and then do dot document to tell Firestore that you're inserting a new document. The second option is a collection reference object. You can think of a document as an object and a collection as a list of objects. So a collection reference is used when referencing a list of objects and a document reference is used for referencing an individual object. You might still be a little confused, so let's take a look at Firestore in the console and clarify. Here I have a collection called Notes. Inside the Notes collection is a list of documents. These are all note documents. So as you can see, a collection is clearly a list of documents. And a document itself is basically just a note object in document form. Let's go back to Android Studio and carry on. We're ready to instantiate a new note object. Write note, note equals new note. Now set the fields. First we set the title. Then we set the content. The note ID. You can get the note ID from the document reference by calling get ID on it. And the user ID. We haven't declared a user ID object yet, so I'll do that above. Remember, we can get the user ID of the authenticated user by writing Firebase auth dot get instance dot get current user dot get UID. There's the note object we're going to be inserting. Notice I didn't set the timestamp field. That's because of the server timestamp annotation that I mentioned a few minutes ago. By not setting the field, I'm effectively setting it to null. And setting it to null will trigger the insertion of a server timestamp. Pretty convenient stuff. We're ready to do the final step, actually inserting the data. To write a new document, we need to call the set method on the document reference and then pass the note object. We can check for task completion using an oncomplete listener or an on success listener. I'm going to use an on complete listener since it checks for both failure and success. Inside the on complete method, we can check for success or failure using an if else block like this. If the task is successful, I'm going to show a snack bar message that says created new note. If the task fails, I'm going to show a snack bar message that says failed check log. That's all there is to inserting data. Run it and let's test it out. Notice that I have Firestore open in the background so you can see the insertion. But before we test, I want to show you the security rules tab. I'm not going to talk too much about Firestore security rules in this video, but if you want more information, I recommend watching my newest Pluralsight course named Firebase on Android Cloud Firestore. There'll be a link in the description of this video to that course. As you can see, the only security rule I have will give any user read or write access as long as they're authenticated. Go back to the data tab. Let's do an insert. I'll click the floating action button on the bottom. I'll enter some random title and give the note some random content. Now I'll click create. If you were watching in the background, you saw the note was inserted. Here it is right here. There's the title I entered, the content I entered, and a server timestamp from Firestore. If you want more information on Firestore, security rules, and inserting data, check out my Firestore course on Pluralsight. It's much more detailed than this short YouTube course. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to check it out. And there's also a link to get your first 10 days free on Pluralsight. If you're interested in some of the other Firebase tools, I also have courses on Firebase authentication and sending verification emails, the Firebase database and cloud storage, Firebase cloud messaging, cloud functions, and Crashlytics. Links to those courses will also be in the description of this video. In the next video, we're going to work on querying a collection of documents from Firestore.